read the binary code. Well. Hello everyone, my name is Stonesy Boy and welcome back to Reading with Stonesy. Today we are reading pages 162 to 180 and the brand new story, Hide and Seek. One chapter is 20 pages even though that has never been true once. We're reading 18 pages today. Uh, and without further ado, because it's been a while since I've read, let's read. Let's get on with it. Let's do this. What's my saying? I've forgotten my saying. Whatever. Let's do this. <clears throat> Hide and seek. Toby, Toby, Toby. Kids chanted that Toby Billings hunched over the Ultimate Battle Warrior arcade game at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games. His left hand clenched a joystick tightly, shifting left and right, up and down. His right hand punched the action buttons of his warrior character to bust every graveyard ghoul opponent in the face and kick him in the gut. Repeatedly, black blood and green sweat splattered on the ghoul. It was so freaking awesome. And that dampening Toby's upper lip, he shifted the peppermint-flavored toothpick at hide his mouth from the one cheek to another. His arm muscles clenched tightly. He was about to achieve the highest game score, the ultimate battle warrior. All he wanted to be was the high score. He had been focused on the game all week, and he was almost there. Almost. He pounded, pounded, pounded on his opponent. Bam, took that sucker down. Winner flashed on across the screen. Toby pushed off the game, raised his arm in victory. Heck yeah, someone patted on his back. Alright, Toby. Take that sucker. Toby punched in the air, grinning. You had to take the first place this time, Toby. Toby expelled his breath, cracked his knuckles, and took a moment to enter his tab initials. Tapping his foot while he waited for the top scores to flash on the screen. His smile fell away as he blinked in disbelief. No freaking way. He had held his second place. His defeat sunk in like a rock in his gut. Oh, no. Nah, your bro is still the highest score. What a drag. Toby's hands clenched the controllers. Sure enough, his oldest brother, Connor's initial, C-O-B, were still listed as number one. Always number one. Jaw tightened. He slammed his palms on the heart in the game. Dang it. Kids started to walk away except for the annoying guy named Reggie. Don't worry about it, Reggie said, slurping his milkshake. His hair was messy and red curls, flaring about like a halo around his head. You'll get the game over him eventually. You're just 1,000 points behind. That's practically nothing. Toby curled his lip. Every game in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games had his brother listed as a top player. He thought he would have this one for sure. He cracked his knuckles and turned away to the stupid game. And he grabbed his soda cup from the small table next to him and flipped some root beer through a straw. They're still hide and seek, Reggie went on. It's just opened a week ago, and your brother hasn't played that one yet. I mean, I haven't seen him anyway, and you still have to play it. And when you do, you will have to an advantage, no problem. No, he hadn't told his brother about the new game attraction that opened up in Freddy just the exact reason. Toby wanted to play it first and snag the top spot. His brother used to have a part-time job at Freddy's when he was in high school. He spent his breaks and after work hours playing all the arcade games in the place until he became top scorer in every single game. Now that he graduated last year and moved on to, in his words, a real job, Toby had taken over his old job helping out and cleaning around his family restaurant. Man, he wanted to beat his brother at his game just once. Was that too much to ask? Toby adjusted the beanie on his head. Yeah, I guess. He'd been watching the long lines die down on the new game, waiting for all the dumb little kids to finish playing uh, the half hour before his shift started, and he still had some time to play around and get the feel for the game. Later, he muttered to Reggie, Go get him, Toby, the kid yelled, then followed with some annoying howling noise. That dude was such a weirdo. Toby heard the bowling balls crashing into pins in the small bowling alleys. He walked through the crowd in the small arcade area. Uh, our voices and game sounds melded together, echoing in his ears. They all sounded like he'd grown accustomed to the six months he worked at the restaurant. He smelled the buttery popcorn, cotton candy, and of course pizza, the occasional stink bomb that came with the clothes of a bunch of sweaty kids. He walked past the laser tag in the price store, and he finally stopped in the floor of the new game attraction, Hide and Seek. A black shadowed Bonnie and a rabbit stood beside the logo. Come find me if you can, was printed under the title of the game. Toby slipped on his tokens and came aim door unlocked. He walked through the doorway, examining the details of the game. The instrumental beat played through the speakers. Inside the room was sectioned off in parts of town. With railing that glided up and down the wall, he entered the board cutouts. There was a park that led to the store, a school, a police station, and of course a pizza place. Each section was about three board cutouts that were posted around the wall so kids wouldn't mess with the game. <laughs> the rules flashed above on a large screen hanging from the ceiling. Rules are simple. There find where Bonnie's hiding three tries in under three minutes or lose the game. Welcome to Hide and Seek. Enter your name and find Bonnie. And let's begin. A deep, bellow voice came out of the wall speaker. Toby crackled his knuckles. No problem, he murmured. He typed his game his name per character. You're mine, rabbit. Here we go, Toby. A black two-dimensional cutout of Bonnie glided around the railing wall. A room darkened to pitch black. Toby heard the quiet sound of Bonnie moving along the railing of the room. Three, two, one. The lights flashed back on. 
Toby blinked and Bonnie was nowhere to be seen. He pulled a toothpick from his mouth and rolled it between his fingers. He bit the bottom of his lip as he assessed the hiding places. He could go anywhere in the game by hitting a button to see where Bonnie might be hiding. He put a toothpick back on his mouth and he moved the police station to hit the button at his desk. Sorry, no Bonnie there. Toby scanned around the room, rubbing his chin. Had he be the pizza place? He walked over to hit the button on the kitchen doors. Sorry, no Bonnie there. One more try. He moved to hit the button in the principal's office school. Uh-uh, you lose. Bonnie glided out of the jail cell of the police station. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby curled his lip. He had not much uh, to the game, but he was still wanting to win. He looked at the screen hanging from the ceiling. Someone already snagged the top scorer for the fastest time. Tom at 258. That's nothing. Toby turned and heard the door unlocked between him. Welcome to hide and seek. Enter your name and try to find Bonnie and let's begin. A little kid walked in, sporting a Freddy Fazbear party hat. Hey, it's my turn now, he said. His bottom lip sticking out. Toby dug out more tokens and slapped them in the kid's hand. The kid... He grabbed the kid's shoulder, shoving him back out the door. I still have one more turn, he told him. Hey, no fair, it's my turn. Stop your whining, I'll be out in a minute. Toby slammed the door into the kid and went to type the game again. Here we go, Toby. Bonnie glided out of the room, blackened. The countdown began. He heard Bonnie move quietly. As soon as the new lights flashed on, Toby ran to the store and pushed the bakery counter. Sorry, no Bonnie here. He ran to the park and chose a tree. No, sorry, no Bonnie here. But Toby gritted his teeth and ran to the pizza place, pounding on the palm of the arcade. Uh-oh, you lose. Bonnie got out of the bushes of the park. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby put the poop pick on the floor as annoyance burned his gut. He visited his hands and stormed out of the exit door at the start of his shift. Stupid game. Toby walked out of the house before after work. He heard a television playing. He rolled his eyes. That meant Connor was home. Great. Dad worked the graveyard shift at the warehouse and wasn't home most nights, so usually it was just him and his brother. Toby popped into the box of leftover pizza in the kitchen table and dug out a piece of pepperoni. He was already irritated because he had played hide-and-seek a few more times before he came home, and he found out that he still couldn't find the rabbit. This game wasn't as complicated. How hard could it be to find a hidden rabbit? What's that you, Tobes? Connor caught out. Who else would it be? Toby walked out of the front room and he leaned against the wall. Yeah, Connor was kicked back at his dad's recliner watching baseball. He wore a dirty button-up shirt, stained with the black grease. Grease was smeared on his cheek and arms. Only his hands were somewhat cleaner, with black oil under his nails. Connor turned to look at Toby and grinned. Beat you in any of the games? Beat me at any games yet, little brother? Connor wanted to know. Gee, how did he know he'd ask? Toby bit into his pizza and chewed. Nope. Connor laughed. Didn't think so. Not gonna happen. Ever. But it's flattering that you keep trying. Toby narrowed his eyes. Oh, it'll happen. Connor lifted his eyebrows. Maybe when pigs fly, sucker. Toby crossed his arms against his chest. He wanted to tell Connor someone else already had the first score in a new game in the pizza place, but he bit his lip. Nah, he wanted to get the lead score first, and he wanted to get his brother anywhere near Toby's until Freddy's until Toby held first place. Toby wanted at him with a pizza slice. Pigs will be flying, you'll see, and you'll be the sucker, and I'll be the winner. Oh, please. Then you won't even know what to do with yourself except to go cry in your room. Connor wasn't deterred. He leaned forward in his recliner. Oh, you mean like the time you beat my overall home runs during Little League? Or how all those times you smashed me at bowling? Toby scowled. Just shut up, Connor. Oh, I know. It must be an overall time for a mile run in PE class. You're such a little speedster, aren't you, Tobes? Toby pushed off the wall. I said shut up. Connor's eyes widened. Oh, wait. You've never beaten me in anything. And you never will because you're a pitiful loser who can't win at anything. Toby... It's all red. He threw pizza at his brother. Connor smiled and gleaned, dodged a slice. And Toby launched himself at Connor in the recliner. He had a moment of satisfaction when his fist hit his brother's gut. Connor grunted. Oh, you're going to pay for that, Connor hissed out. Fist flew. Toby was lifted across the floor. He hit a carpet. It brushed out of his mouth. His brother clocked him in the chin, then maneuvered him to a strong arm around his neck. Toby's face heated. He was losing air. He tapped out his brother's arm. His brother released him and shoved him to the side while Toby coughed. Uh, shoulders heaving. Connor pointed a finger down at him. I always beat you at everything, idiot. When are you going to learn uh, through your thick head? I always win, and you always lose like a loser you were born to be. Connor left the room, leaving Toby to the floor. Toby just lay spot on the floor, breathing hard, starting at the ceiling. The next day, Toby studied a block of wood in woodshop class, rubbing his chin on the forefinger. Buzz saws and drills sounded around him. He said it was freshly cut wood filled his nostrils. He was supposed to be working on a small cutting board project, but he had other ideas in the moment, like making rail blocks for hide-and-seek. Go that the game rabbit wouldn't hide in the same of the areas of the game. Yeah, that was just cheating, but he does, just didn't care. For once, he wanted to shove a winning score right in his brother's face. He felt tension grip his body inch by inch, just thinking about Connor. How he always had to be number one in everything he did. He always had to rub it in Toby's face. Well, he wasn't going to be the loser this time. It was the last thing he did. Everything had been a big competition with Connor as far as back as Toby could remember. Connor always had to have the best score and the best grades. The biggest piece of cake. 
He had to be stronger than Toby in arm wrestling. Beat him in boxing. One on one in basketball. He had to be the attention from his dad and mom when he she'd be around. He'd been a star quarterback in junior varsity season until he banged up his knee and couldn't play well afterward. It was really messed with his brother's head. Toby remembered him mopping around the house for months. Toby had even felt bad for him for a little while until Connor had gotten a job at Freddy's and then went to the arcade game mission, defeating every high score in the place. He'd been obnoxious and unbearable. Ever since then, now that Toby worked here, there, Connor held his ultimate arcade victory over Toby nearly every day. It drove Toby freaking crazy. That was why Connor's reign was co finally coming to an end. Determined, Toby was got to work at the block of wood, cutting out squares that soon to be perfect rail blocks for hide and seek. Mr. Pendick walked over to Toby's state workstation. He adjusted his glasses to look at Toby cutting out blocks. Those are too small to be a cutting board, Toby. Yeah, I know. I'm getting the cutting board next. Mr. Pendick crosses on. The cutting board is our assignment now. It's due at the end of the period. How are you going to get done in 30 minutes? You're a good kid, Toby. I know you can do better than this if you just try and put some effort into your projects. I'm trying to put starting on my project right now, irritated. Toby walked to the wood table and placed another piece of wood at the cutting board. Then, Mr. Pendick walked away and he set a new piece of wood aside and continued his rail blocks. Some things were more important than took priority over with schoolwork, like beating an annoying, arrogant, loudmouth brother. After Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and games closed that night, Toby inserted the coins for a new round of hide-and-seek. There were only a couple of employees left cleaning up in the kitchen. He snuck inside the game room and near the end of his shift. The game voice welcomed him to the game. Before Toby entered his name, he walked over to a small barricaded fence that blocked the wall from the players getting too close to the game and hopped over from a sweatshirt. He dug out of small wooden blocks and he shipped into the fit of railing. He gave the blocks a good pound with his hand, wedging each wood piece into the rails to cut off access to the school, police station, and pizza area. Now the only places the rabbit could hide were the park and store, which were right next to each other. Toby smiled and nodded. Now he would definitely win. He'd get his name listed in the first place. Oh yeah, let's do this. He couldn't wait to rub Connor's face in his win. He could see his brother now. His face would get all red, like it did whenever something didn't go his way. And he'd storm off, hit a wall in the house like a big baby. Dad would yell at him to go cool off, and then Dad would look at Toby and roll his eyes. Toby snickered. It would be priceless. Toby hopped back over a small fence and ran to enter his name in the game. Here we go, Toby. Oh, yeah, here we go, rabbit. Bonnie glided out of the room black in three. Bobby, Toby tapped his foot and he's waiting for the lights to turn on. Two, one. As soon as the room brightened, he sprinted to the park and slapped on the slide. Sorry, no Bonnie here. He hit a tree. Sorry, no Bonnie here. Rattle, he hit the deli at the store. Uh-oh, you lose. Toby's jaw dropped in disbelief. His peppermint flavored toothpick fell to the floor. No freaking way. Body blind behind the cash register at the store. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby's hand fisted and growled loudly in frustration. You think you're funny, don't you, Rabbit? You think I'm the loser? Well, I'm not, you idiot. You're the loser. You'll see. He paced back and forth and tore a beam from his head. His entire body vibrated with tension. I'm not going to lose another game to you. He rubbed his hands over his head. Think, think. He wanted to win. He needed to win. Suddenly, he rolled to the quick solution across in his mind. Yes. He rushed out of the game room. A minute later, he inserted his tokens and came back in. And carrying two metal chairs. He already had the store, the school, and the pizza place covered. He wedged the back of the chairs onto the railing of the park and the store. The bottom of the chairs leaned forward with the small fence. Welcome to hide and seek. Enter your name and try to find Bonnie. Let's begin. Yeah, yeah, he muttered. Toby stood back, hands on his hips, looking at the handiwork. Everywhere was blocked. There's no way the rabbit would even hide at all. Ha, huh. that's your nest, sucker. Who's the winner now? The rubbed his damp palms together and rushed to the input of his name. He felt the sheen of a sweat on his forehead and wiped the back of his hand. He felt jittery. Off. Like he'd been to keep still. He rolled his neck in circular motion and cracked his knuckles. Here we go, Toby. A voice sang out. Bonnie glided out of the room, lacking. Three. Bonnie. Toby's stomach looked a sudden dive. His head went light. He almost felt like puking. Two. For one moment, a rush of quiet seemed to fill the room. As if all air was sucked out of the air and ears were about to pop. He felt a strange tickle in his back and shifted his shoulder to make it go away. Then all at once, Sam rushed back into his ears. One. The lights flashed on. Toby blinked. He felt disoriented. He rubbed his eyes and scanned the walls before him. Wait. Bonnie was gone. He, Toby's head swiveled left and right. If even in the ceiling, there was no way the rabbit could hide anywhere. What the heck? Where'd he go? He rushed to the small fence barricade and humped over the billiard cutouts that were trying to peer inside a slight gap between the cutouts of the wall. The slots were empty. No, this wasn't right. His stomach was turning and his chest felt tight. He continued to run to each cutout, peering to behind the wooden displays. There's no way the rabbit could have gone. This didn't make any sense. Toby's heart beat like a drum. His bed of sweat dripped down his side of his head. No, no, no. This wasn't fair. The stupid rabbit couldn't win. He flashed across his face. A burst of helplessness energy flared throughout his body. His breath increased. He wasn't a loser. He wasn't a freaking loser. He ran a chair and he propped it against the railing, picked it up and heaved it across the room. It smashed it against the wall and dented a hole into the game's pizza place. 
He pulled uh, one part of the small fence and tore it down. He stomped it through a broken barrier and stalked over to another chair and threw it against another wall. He pulled down another section of fencing and reached into a tree cut out of the park. He gritting his teeth, he pulled it all his strength and ripped off the wall. He crashed to the floor. Only a few pegs uh, stuck out of his place. He threw three and got back to his feet. He ran to the police station, tearing the desk cut out. I always always beat you at everything, idiot. When you're going to get the through thick head, I'll always win and you'll always lose, like a loser you weren't born to be. He tugged and tore at anything he could get his hands on. He wasn't sure how long he went at it, tearing down and destroying. All he knew was he was had to get rid of this helpless feeling within him. The feeling of being weak and powerless. His pain was always seemed to be inside him. He hated it. He needed it out. Gone. Finally, his body grew tired and he tripped a piece of cutout and he fell on his ass. His chest was heaving up and down. Sweat covered his face. His hands were red and throbbing. He looked around as he'd done. The satisfaction filled him. Yeah, take that, he thought. He pretty much destroyed hide and seek. As he stared at the destruction, reality crashed down on him. He swallowed his past dryness of his throat. He scrubbed his face in his hands and continued to stare at the mess he created. He ruined the game. That wasn't his. He wasn't going to get in so much trouble. Frantic, he stood and grabbed the tree he'd torn from the wall. He quickly tried to reattach the pegs, but it was no use. He just crashed back to the floor. What did I do? He whispered. Then the only thing he could think to do, he ran out of the room. Toby opened his eyes, blinked. He was in the dark. He was lying face down on a cold metal table. Where was he? Bright lights flashed above him and he squinted. He tried to sit up, but his hands were tied above his head. His legs were bound to his ankles and he couldn't move them. What the heck? Toby tried to lift his head a while. Hey, what's going on? Connor, are you messing with me? His voice seemed to echo inside the room. He looked around to see a brick of the surrounding him. You're going to get busted for doing this. Someone shifted behind him. When there was no one answered, panic set in. Connor would have been babbling his mouth by now. Yeah, whoever you are, you better let me go. He jerked his hands, but his rope was just bit through his wrists, rubbed his skin raw. His heartbeat seemed to pound against his cold table beneath him. When he spotted something dark in the peripheral vision, what do you want? He felt his shirt tug from his back, and he heard scissors cutting at it. Stop it. Leave me alone. Cold air hit his skin. Then he heard more movement. Then something small bit into his back, like a needle. Ouch. Don't touch me. He... The needle was pulled out, and then he felt his skin being tugged. What the heck are you doing to me? He jerked his hand to the right, trying to see what happened. Sweat pulled from his forehead. Again, he felt the needle push into his skin and then pull. Blood dripped down his back and grained through intensity. Stop, you're hurting me, please. I said stop. Whatever it was the dark figure was, he didn't speak, and he didn't stop. And all felt every prick and pull of the needle was realization dawned. Someone was sewing something back to his back. Someone help me, he screamed, please. Toby jerked awake. He sat up in his bed, alert, heart pounding, breathing fast. He was disoriented. It was just a bad dream. Sunlight slanted through his window blinds. He was okay. He was home. It was day, was it? What time was it to go to school? Did he oversleep? He glanced at his alarm clock. 7.55 a.m. He didn't set his alarm because it was a Saturday, right? He rubbed his face, then glanced at the mirror mounted on his dresser across the room bed. His face was pale and there was dark circles under his eyes. His brown hair stuck up in like crazy directions. He spotted a shadow on the wall behind him. He felt a ticklish feeling on his back. A shadow? Frowning... He tilted his head and he looked at it from the reflection of the mirror. It hadn't seemed right. There wasn't enough light in the window blinds for him to see his own shadow in the room. He shifted and learned to the right. A second later, the shadow followed. The shadow followed. And that is... The end of that. At least for today. <sighs> so today we read... We read pages 162 to 180. We're almost done. We have only three more episodes, with one being 11 pages, one being 20, and the other one being, well, 20. So, we're going to be done with this book pretty fast. But yeah, next time we meet, we're going to be reading pages 181 to 200. So, I hope you guys have a super fantastic, wonderful day. Be polite, be fishy, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.